Hey, this is Alec. Welcome to White Whale Comics. And welcome to the second episode of my Artist Review Series videos. And in this episode, we are going to be looking at the artwork of Darwin Cook. Darwin Cook is someone who I feel like should get a lot more notoriety than he does. Um, he did pass away in 2016, and uh, within the industry, he certainly was well respected. He won 13 Eisners and 8 Harveys, which is uh, a remarkable amount, but I feel like he, like, I don't hear his name come up a lot when it comes to great artists of the 21st century, which is a shame because um, we're going to look at some of his great art and hopefully show you why I feel that way. I just want to start by showing some uh, examples of his strong design and composition sense. He did a series of variant covers for DC uh, one month. I think it was uh, maybe 2014, end of 2014. And they were all these interesting horizontal images so that, you know, if you looked at the comic, the normal way you look at a comic, they were sideways, but um, I turned them all so you wouldn't have to crane your heads to look at the images. I'm not going to talk a lot about each of these, I uh, just wanted to show them off to, to give you a better um, breadth of his work, uh, because I think some of them are really remarkable. They have this really great uh, energy in the movement and the flow not just of the characters themselves, but of the composition. They really draw your eye around and you know they have these great expressions and these really uh, expressive poses that I think just are really wonderful. Most of these, if you're looking for them, are issue 37s of the series, except for that Teen Titans one, I think that was number five. While I was looking up images for this section, I found an article about them being announced, and in the article it said something to the effect of, Darwin Cook creates images of a DC universe you wish existed. And uh, I think that's pretty accurate. I mean, you look at these and they, like, I would read any of these books in a heartbeat. They look exactly like what I want from, from a superhero comic, all of them. So I want to focus on two main aspects of his work. Uh, the first one is his ability to design a page. A lot of times... Uh, artists concentrate on telling a story, which obviously I think is paramount when uh, making a comic book, because if you're not telling the story, it is a failure off the bat. And I think the second focus is designing a panel. But fewer artists spend the time to really concentrate on designing a full page as a singular piece of work. And I think he does a really great job of that. You look at this image and, you know, it tells the story. It gives you the information that you need visually of, of Catwoman climbing this roof. And in fact, it could be a splash page. The images to the right in the small boxes certainly add to how the story is being told, but they only do that. They add to how the story is being told. They don't add to the story. You could still get the sense of Catwoman climbing this building from this from the larger image. But he chose to do that to make a, a more cohesive design and create a singular image on the page. You know, this could be a poster if you change the anodyne text to Catwoman. You know, you wouldn't blink an eye if this was on someone's wall. Or at least I wouldn't. I don't want to speak for you. I'm sorry. Now, I know this is a splash page, so it's kind of cheating, but um, 
uh, I think it's just so well designed and such a such a good decision to make this the way he did his choice of where to put the text box or you know that may be the letterer I don't want to take anything away from that but um, a lot of times artists will will at least lay out where they want text boxes um, but certainly everyone involved uh, in creating this image from you know he, he wrote a lot of his own stuff but I think um, I believe this is from one of the issues of Catwoman and Ed Brubaker was writing that at the time but he wrote a lot of his own work and colored a lot of his own work but I can't necessarily say he created this entire image because uh, I don't want to take anything away from other creators but I should do better research but I mean it's a great image right it's just it looks great similarly here this is very considered in how it presents as a page. Obviously every panel is very well designed and a lot of it is, you know, the choices that were made were intentional for the story that he wanted to tell in this page, but it really, again, is a cohesive image. You can look at this as a whole and it is compositionally sound and it is, and it interestingly relates to it itself if that makes sense. He didn't do a lot of work for Marvel, but uh, I wanted to include this just because uh, I think it's a really good example of the humor he injected into his work at times, um, or, or at least a lighthearted spirit. And uh, I love Dupe, so. Um, but again, it's the, the way he laid this out as a whole, it just is very pleasing. He's probably uh, most well known for his series, uh, DC's New Frontier, which is a mini series that uh, I could have basically taken any random page from any of the six issues and, and picked them as examples of, of this, but because the the whole book is just absolutely gorgeous and most of it is told in this three wide panel format and I'm pretty sure this was an animation first that he worked on and then he wrote the graphic novel version but I could be way off on that and again I should do better research oof uh but I think these two pages are, you know, obviously they, they mirror each other to a point, but they're in completely different issues. And, but it, I think it really speaks to his intention of how he tells the story. I don't think it's an accident that they are similar. I don't think that he's copycatting himself. I think he is choosing to create uh, a story in a certain way and, and design pages with a certain sense. I mean, I think these are both just really gorgeous. And uh, finally, in this section, this is my absolute favorite page that I've seen from him. I think it is just perfection the way the story is being told, the way the images are laid out. I mean, you could, again, similarly to that first image I showed, you could take away a lot of these panels and tell the same story, but you wouldn't tell it in the same way. You know, you could just have the panel with her speaking and then her jumping off the building. Or similarly, you could have it laid out with her jumping off the building being a much smaller panel. But the way he decided to lay this out and it's just so nice looking. I don't I don't know what else to say about it. I wish I'd planned better. Maybe next time. Speaking of time, that is gonna be the next section we're talking about here. Um, I know I spoke about time in the last video, uh, how it relates to 
the borders in between panels, but in this episode, uh, I want to talk about how time relates panel to panel and the different ways that time can be presented in comics. Uh, and a lot of these work in film as well. Um, so the first one is moment to moment. And what that is in uh, comics is literally second to second storytelling. So a panel of someone turning their head and you see multiple angles of their head turning would be ex an example of moment to moment. Action to action is, for example, Batman winding up a punch and then throwing a punch. So you stay within the same moment of action, but you see the either the before and after of the action or the, or the, the setup and the result. Subject to subject is staying within the same scene, but cutting between different uh, people or things. Scene to scene is cutting between multiple places or multiple times. Aspect to aspect is a, a strange one, and it's not used very much in American comics. It's used a lot in manga, where basically it is a moment frozen in time, where you cut between different perspectives or objects, uh, and it's used to establish mood a lot of times. Um, and the last one, which is really not used very much except in weirdo indie comics, is non sequitur. Uh, which is basically things that have no relation to one another as far as the story goes. So you could cut from, uh, I don't know, M Mount Rushmore to a bowl of soup, but you're talking about Mount Rushmore still and it has nothing to do with soup. And then you cut to, uh, you know, a man on the moon and you're still talking about Mount Rushmore. And it's just, they, they have no relation to what the story is telling. And that's why they're not used very much, because they're just weird. In fact, three of these are almost exclusively the ones used in comics. Moment to moment, aspect to aspect, and non sequitur are rarely used, while action to action, subject to subject, and scene to scene are like 99, they must be like 99% of comics. I'm going to give you some examples uh, just to show you, rather than me just continuing to blab incessantly. Um, this page is just filled with action to action. So you have Catwoman throwing the disc and it landing on the wall. You have Catwoman unscrewing the manhole and jumping down it. You have Catwoman hitting on the grate and then jumping through the grate. Subject to subject, you got the zombie head, then it cuts to Catwoman, cuts to her busting the handle, cuts back to Catwoman, all within the same scene, but different subjects. Now this is, I feel, is still an example of subject to subject, even though it looks like it could be scene to scene, which I'll get to next, but it's all within the same scene of establishing Las Vegas. So to me, this is subject to subject because, um, you know, it's cutting from the sign to the showgirl to slot machines, but it that's all the same scene to me. Feel free to disagree. And scene to scene, uh, pretty straightforward. This, uh, this guy laughing, ruining the movie, cuts to him walking down the street, cuts to him coming home. That is scene to scene. So going back to the six types of time telling, the one I want to focus on as far as Darwin Cook is concerned is moment to moment. Again, this is something that isn't used very much, but I think he does it very well. And for purpose. So here's a couple of pages with Catwoman chasing this train. And on the page on the left, if you look at the bottom eight panels, you see her 
running to chase the train and then jumping down onto the train. This could have been told in two panels. Could have shown her running, you know, could have been two long panels. She could have been running after the train and then she could have jumped on the train. But the fact that he told it in eight panels slows down the time and creates more of a dramatic moment. And if you look at the next page where she is jumping onto the train at the top, you know, the, the three of the four top panels are one image in the background. They're just separated by the panel lines. So again, that could have been one panel. You could have taken off, taken out the left and the right and left just the one of her jumping. And then on the next row, could have had her landing and it tells the same story but it tells it in a different way and it tells it at a different pace and uh, the pace that he has chosen in these pages is very intentional to create that slowdown of time to create that drama of is she going to make it and uh, I think it's super effective so here's another great example you look at the three panels on the top right where she's busting through the window and you see that little cross of wood that she then ends up having in the final panel. It illustrates how she got it but illustrates it in a in a really I think exciting way. Uh, you know again if this were a film you can imagine this slow motion shot of her jumping through this window and snatching this falling piece of wood out of the air as a, a desperation move in order to fight this weird blobo beast. You know, you could have, you know, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but again, you, you could have told this in one panel. You could have just shown her jumping through the window and grabbing the wood, but the way it depicts the time of the, of the action is vastly different. And back to this page, uh, I liked it so much I used it twice. This could be argued that this isn't moment to moment and it's action to action, but I'm going to argue otherwise, especially because, you know, Batman turning, I guess, is action to action, but th the way it's used is more of a moment to moment. It's, it's used to slow time down. It's not used to show, uh, it's not used to show an action per se, I feel like. Um, especially at the top where she pushes him away. I, I talked earlier about how you could have just had her speaking and then jumping off the building. And that's why I feel like this falls into moment to moment. It's a bit more on the line, like I said, but you know, it, it slows down time so much the way she puts her hands up and, and then pushes him away and then jumps off the building. It really tells the story in an interesting way. So that's it. Again, I think he really was a master craftsman. And if you have not read DC's New Frontier, I would definitely recommend it. It is a piece of art. As always, I hope that if you weren't familiar with his work, um, you check it out. And if you were familiar with his work, that I offered you a new perspective and a new way to, to kind of observe it. Let me know what you think in the comments. So I'm continually hoping to improve this series. Um, and if there's any artists that you want to see featured, let me know that as well. And I will take that into consideration. I don't want to see a bunch of like joke responses. I'm not going to name names, but anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Never turn your back to the ocean.